So today um, we are talking about the subject of magnetism. And this is designed to be interactive. This is something that I created out of interest to just share something that we don't often talk about because it is something that I feel like very few of us have on our radar, but this is a really powerful way to boost the results that we're getting in our lives and the results we get at work. So I have a couple of quotes here. Henry David Thoreau, I believe that there is a subtle magnetism in nature, which if we unconsciously yield to it, will direct us aright. A lot of stuff that's been coming up in my sessions, um, with clients, and then also my life is about surrender and letting go of control. So magnetism is one of those forces that when we surrender, it has the possibility to bring us more into contact with the universe and that wisdom. All right. And Mesmer, I think he was German doctor, Austrian doctor who was so in into the idea of magnetism and using magnetism to heal that he actually became known for another word called mesmerizing. So <laughs> this is an 18th century doctor, but he really believed there is an, a responsive influence that exists between the heavenly bodies, the earth and the animated bodies. When I talk about the work that I do, which is the world that we see and the world that we don't see, but that is affecting us. We know thoughts are real. We know emotions are real and we don't see them, but they have a very big effect on our, in our world. So the idea here is that we're all connected on some sort of quantum level. And if we are connected, there is some sort of influence happening. So we want to be smart about our energy and we want to use our energy to our fullest extent possible so that we're not leaking and wasting energy, but we are looking to leverage it and use it in a smart way so that we can get the kind of results that we want. All right, so the third one here, this, this is Yogananda, who is a beautiful spiritual teacher from India. His take on magnetism is that if you attract others by spiritual magnetism, then you will meet your soul companion. So spiritual magnetism is a whole different level of working with the tools of subtle energies. We're going to talk a little bit more about subtle energies. All right. Why are we here? <laughs> We're going to do four things today, essentially. We're going to talk about our intentions, do a quick warm up. We're going to really discuss what is magnetism and how does it work. And then we're going to go ahead and map out some of our personal magnetism traits. We're going to do a little bit of analysis. And we're also going to look at where maybe, where maybe we might be blocking our inner magnetism. This is something that I feel like we don't, we focus on what we want to, what we want to get better at or change, or what are the things that are not going the way that we want. But when we can look at kind of like different aspects of the same thing, side by side, we have a better chance of making change. And I bring up the different sides because, you know, I have magnets here. Magnets have poles, they are polarized, and this is the same magnet, even though it has opposing forces. So part of what we wanna do when we look at magnetism is where are we ma being magnetic and where are we being repellent? So we'll talk more about that. Any questions so far? And the, the chat is on, the chat is yours. Uh, feel free to use it. And then we're gonna reflect. We're gonna recap kind of what our takeaways were, have an opportunity to ask questions, and we'll go from there. All right, so for those of you who, who don't know me, I'm Marta. I am a trained musician and have been for many years a management consultant. And just recently, last year, I started using energy and strategy to heal professionals. My own journey is that I was carrying around a lot of stuff and a lot of it was unprocessed and it started to impact things at work, things in my relationships, things in my family. And I just had a lot that I was carrying around and I've been doing energy healing for 25 years. I put it on the back burner because I thought that serious people don't use energy in order to do their jobs. 
So therefore that was something that I needed to grow out of. And it's funny because at every moment in my life where things were <laughs> breaking down and I didn't know what to do, I always came back to energy. And now it's become clear that my life's work is to share energy in the business context to help people again, clear blocks, release what no longer serves them and to open up space. Cause when we let energy go, that doesn't serve us, we create space that we can use to fill, to get the results that we would want more than whatever we've been carrying around. All right. So let's talk about intentions. So I've talked about me and, and why I'm here. Magnetism to me has been a very interesting, very influential topic over the last couple of years. And it's something that I am just learning how to not just tap into, but really play with very frequently. So who are you? Why are you here today? And what would you like to gain from this session? So you can add it to the chat. You can raise your hand. This is all very informal. So if you'd like to um, just take yourself off mute, we can just do a, a quick spin around. But Jess. Oh, hello. <laughs> Hi. It's such a big question. Who are you? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm Jessica. Uh, uh, I knew, know Marta through the professional world. Uh, and I think that I'm here joining this. I think a lot of insights into this world of energy and, and putting where you put your focus and all of that has, has, I found value in, in it the past few years. Um, and I'm just looking to lean into things that I didn't really know that much about. Uh, so that's, I guess, leans into the next one. What would you like to gain from this session of just learning a little bit more about stuff that I didn't, didn't know before that could be a benefit. Amazing. Thank you for sharing. So happy to have you here. So happy to have your share. Anyone else like to share? Hi, everybody. I'm Joyce. Um, I, too, have known Marta through different, um, I guess, phases of life is the best way to say it. Um, I just finished um, <clears throat> several months with her coaching. And when I saw the invitation for this masterclass, I was like, hmm, I'm curious to keep learning more about this. Um, it's an area that I've maybe started a journey on learning more about energy but it's certainly not something that I have a good um, practice around per se. And so I'm here out of curiosity and um, I think just gaining more awareness of how it works and how it influences us um, is what I hope to gain from the session. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'll tag on. Um, I'm Lisa and Joyce forced me to be, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm really happy to be here today. Um, Joyce and I have had a really unique a um, few decades long relationship at this point. And most recently, it's been a really rewarding experience for us both to have gone through some really deep somatic trauma healing work, not together, but together in tandem, um, as we were both going along our own journeying. So I feel like there have been some incredible connections that we have made separately that I'm excited to bridge a little bit more into these spaces. Um, not knowing what the topic was beforehand, it's very um, interesting because I think one of the spaces I've been in is really how to bring the somatic work that I've done over the last number of years um, to more of like an actual tangible cellular level to my mm -hmm. body. I think magnetism is a part of that. I've been playing a lot with what it feels like to allow things in instead of having to reach out and pull things in. So um, magnetism, I think, is a good word to describe what I probably wasn't um, mm -hmm. uh, directly identifying that I'd like to hone it more in on. So mm. I'm excited to dig a little bit deeper. Amazing. Thank you for that. Amazing. I love it when, uh, if we're all connected, like I believe we are, I think that anybody who engages in any type of healing like you, you lighten the load for everybody. Like the, the micro release of any sort of anything by any one of us benefits everybody. So team healing, I'm all for it. Good, good job. <laughs> Amazing. Um, all right. So Janelle is a graduate student here to learn more about magnetism. Would like to gain more knowledge of how to improve my life with energy and magnetism. Okay. Awesome. 
And big night, big win of the night. <laughs> a child is in bed. All right. Woo. All right. Fantastic. And group aspect of the journey, connect outside of the immediate network and friend group. Awesome. Jamie is first de uh, generation Dominican American mother, wife to Sean, choral music educator, nonprofit leader. She's here because she believes healing and evolution are a constant thing in life and want to feel good and have a wonderful, more magnetic life. Yes. All right. Awesome. Well, Thank you. Again. So oh, Sean, you're here. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. I'm in. I'm in the car. So I can't forgive that. I'll be home in a few minutes, but I just want to say hello to the group. I'm Sean and uh, Cole's here in the back. Hey, Cole. And uh, yeah, I, I was very interested in the the course. Uh, I don't know. The word magnet really resonated with me because I've really seen lately how I attract things good or bad. Uh, and sometimes it feels like my magnet has lost its charge and I'm barely attracting anything. And sometimes I see that the magnet is just bringing in all this cool stuff. So I just thought it'd be great to explore it. And, you know, basically anything that Marta does, I want to know about. So I'm just here to learn. <laughs> oh, you, you all are the best. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful to have you all here. Um, all right. So have you ever used a magnet? Have we all used magnets? All right, so elementary question, how does a magnet work? Yeah, Lisa, Joyce. Oh, it either pulls things towards it or it pushes things away. Yes, and, yeah, exactly. So I had fun with science, a STEM kit <laughs> that I bought just for this workshop. And it has these little cars. So this car has the red and the blue, and then my magnet has the red and the blue. And even just by pushing, the polarity pushes the car or it pulls the car. So the idea of a magnet is basically that the ions are pointed in one direction on one end and on the other end, they're pointed the other direction. So yes. Magnets either repel or attract. And, oh, these are really strong. Like and unlike have the magnetizing effect. And then of course, when you have the poles that are the same, they repel each other. And sometimes we don't recognize that we want things in our life, but we're actually in the mode of repelling rather than attracting. So I just thought it was, it would be fun to rehash kind of like the elementary things about what magnets do. This is my fridge. I'm a big lover of magnets and I use them every day. My husband's granddaughter is obsessed with magnets and she's learning sometimes, you know, if you're working on the freezer or the fridge or on the oven, it will stick, but like the door doesn't stick to the dishwasher doesn't stick to. So we're all kind of figuring out and remembering to Sean's point, there are things that are sticky to us. And there are things that no matter how hard we try, we're just not magnetized to that thing. And that's okay. But sometimes we block the magnetism. And that's really what we're going to be talking about today. So Google definition of magnetism is a physical phenomenon produced by the motion of electric charge resulting in attractive and repulsive forces between objects. Repellent, repulsive, repulsive means a lot of things. Repellent is the word that I'm gonna use today. And then second is the ability to attract and charm people. So the example they give, his personal magnetism attracted men to the brotherhood. And I just included the uh, synonyms as well for just for fun. All right, so to summarize, magnets have polarity, meaning they're actually opposite ends of the same charge and they are attractive and repellent. But the interesting thing about a magnet is that it really does have both. It has both sides. And I know when I was growing up, my mom, I, there was this bossy girl in fifth grade and I just could not stand her because she just needed to be the center of everything. And I will never forget her, her name was Samantha. And I was like, Samantha, simmer down, like give, give us a break here from your personality. And my mom said to me at one point, 
the people who annoy us, there's something in us that we don't like that we see in them. And I was like, what kind of crap is this? (laughs) How can that possibly be true? But I have definitely noticed, especially having gone through music school and feeling like I I felt very attacked and criticized. I noticed there's a tendency in my family, in my own practice, to criticize in order to feel safe, to feel like I could preserve something about myself. So I, I see what she's saying now. And I've been thinking a lot about the polarity of things. It's also kind of, I don't know if anybody's listened to Abraham Hicks, but Abraham Hicks talks about the emotional scale. And as long as you're reaching for a better feeling thought, eventually you will be in a place where you are super highly mag- uh, and magnetic and attractive to the things that you want. But if your emotions are low, you're going to attract low frequency things. So the idea of polarity, this is actually a hermetic principle. This is one object. It has the opposites in- involved and self-contained. So polarity, the law of polarity is that things that are opposites are actually the same energy. It's just different sides, different ends of the stick, so to speak. So how is it possible that someone we used to love deeply, fully, thoroughly, unhesitatingly becomes somebody that we despise? It's the same energy as love and hate. It's just that we're in a different place with it. But because it's the same frequency, we can find ourselves on any part of that scale. So why would anyone want to be magnetic? And what qualities do magnetic people have? This is just for a bit of discussion here. Why would anyone want to be magnetic? Some of us have have shared a little bit about that. Let's go into it. Why would anyone want to be magnetic? What is the benefit of being magnetic? And those people that are magnetic, what qualities do they have? I'll go. I think that people might want to be magnetic because when you magnetize things, again, it's like when I look in this box, it's just like a whole mess of things that just, they happen. They're not exerting a whole lot of effort. They're just being and stuff is just like magnetized. So I think magnetism is a way to do things in an easier way. And wouldn't we all like to do easier things because Human beings, I love us all so much. We tend to complicate things more than they need to be complicated. So Janelle says that magnetic people are fun, energetic, warm, and inviting. Yeah, that's often the case. I I have noticed, and there have been a couple of times in my life where I was in a place where somebody with a lot of energy or a lot of fame walked in the room, and either I felt that or I noticed something different about that person, some, somebody being noticed, not just because of who they are. And, you know, living in New York, I feel like you run into celebrities all the time, but there are very few of them where you're like, Oh, whoa. Cause you can actually feel something from them. There've been leaders and spiritual figures and just important or notable people, Martin Luther King, this is MLK day was Monday. He was a person with a a whole lot of personal magnetism, and he was somebody who was a very magnetic speaker, and people listened when he spoke. So yeah, doing it the easy way, magnetic qualities of being nice to be around, being desired, being important. So I'm curious, do you feel that everyone lives on, like everyone has inherent magnetism, or just that different a different yes. layer of polarity. Cause I know there are people who, who like work really hard, but they just do not have that same magnetism as people who I would say naturally exude it. Cause I do think there are a whole group of people that do not really have to work that hard for that channel to be open. So is your belief system that everyone lives on that spectrum and it's just a matter of kind of like honing in and moving the dial in one direction or the other? I, that's a fantastic question. And thank you for asking. Um, My own belief is that, yeah, everybody's in here somewhere. There's no person that does not have any magnetism, in my opinion. And (laughs) some people polarize it in the negative way. But 
part of my understanding of, um, I, I believe in past lives and not every lifetime is for everything. So, and one of the reasons I think past lives just make sense for me and my belief system is that this cannot be everything we're supposed to learn packed into one, one body, one, one soul experience. I believe the soul is eternal and that there are many opportunities that we use. We come here to gather information, gather data, to learn lessons and to contribute whatever it is that we're contributing. So not everybody is meant to be necessarily super magnetic and highly magnetic in every life. But I do believe um, that when you have lifetimes where you have mastered a skill or where you have mastered a lesson, that becomes a capacity that becomes intuition in other lifetimes and future lifetimes. In other words, if you pass the course, you don't have to go back and retake the test. And there are likely lifetimes where you develop different aspects of it. We're going to talk about self-development a little bit and how to raise your personal magnetism by working with subtle energies. So that will definitely be something that we talk about. But in terms of your question about belief system, yeah, I believe everybody has it. But just like wealth, we're not all wealthy in, in every lifetime. We have to learn lessons. And if we don't have we don't have something and then not have it in another lifetime, number one, we wouldn't appreciate it. And we wouldn't necessarily be able to learn the opposite lesson, which is also equally as valuable. This is this is great question. Happy to, to share more afterwards. We're all on a spectrum from where I am. I'm going to talk about the most magnetic person that I knew. And this is a person who still looms large in my memories is my grandpa. So this is my mom's dad, Grandpa Puzz, Victor Puzz. He lived to 77. He died when I was 11. He had not a gray hair on his head. And he is the most special person I've ever met. He was charming. He had charisma. He was super caring. He was very creative, a little naughty sometimes, and very confident. And this is a, a person who <laughs> he had a very hard life. He had pneumonia pretty much throughout his childhood. His parents had nothing, you know, immigrants from Croatia. And he had a lot of health problems, but he was the second oldest of like six kids and he loved his family very much. And they were the kind of family that always found the good in things. And despite the hardships and despite pretty much coming of age right before the depression and really having to grow up fast and put food on the table for his brothers and sisters who were a lot younger, some of them much younger, he always kept a positive outlook. So he did pretty much whatever it took to be successful. And those things included carrying milk and shoe shines and whatever odd jobs he could pick up. And then when he became a young man, he started a dry cleaning business, which was pretty successful. And it became a family business. And he would take my mom out on the delivery runs and they would look at birds and they would bond and she would learn. And that was really her quality time with her dad. But her dad was somebody who, my grandpa, he is the kind of person when he walked in the room, things, people stopped talking and everyone wanted to be with him. He is the most magnetic person I've ever met because literally when he walked in a room, people would stop what they were doing and go walk over to him. It's like, what? What is the power of this? And for me as a child, it's like I was arguing with my sister or whatever. We were doing our thing, bickering, because I wanted to be close to her. And she was like, enough, I need space and all that stuff. <laughs> he would walk in and it's like you could not help but have a silly smile on your face instantly. It's like anything else other than being happy, you could not have that energy in his presence. It was impossible to feel anything other than love or silliness and he was very silly but he was incredibly powerful also I saw when grandma died people came to the house hundreds of people came to the house he had women chasing him he was the catch and you know this is a, a man who had an aneurysm and a lifetime of smoking and a lot of health problems but man 
he was very alluring because whoever he was with, he was so good with people. They would forget everything other than the pleasure of what it was like to be in his presence. It's like you could not have a problem when you were in his presence. You just forgot everything that was painful. And I don't know how he did it other than um, he just had a big heart and he was a very generous person. But he used to volunteer at the hospital and people tr stuff money into his pockets and he didn't know where it came from. And he just loved being with people. So he didn't ever want that or expect that. And he'd try to find people and return it. But like, man, he was highly sought after. People would run down the hall seeing him coming. So this is these are the qualities that I saw in him. And he had a high desirability. Like he was quite the catch. So I'm wondering, the most magnetic person you know Take a minute and think about like, who is this person that you know that has a lot of this personal power? Think about a couple of qualities that really go into that attractiveness. And then how do you know they have these qualities? And bonus question, what have they been able to do because of these qualities? My grandfather had a high school education and he ended up doing work for the Ohio Turnpike Treasurer's Office. How did he get there? Wasn't just his resume. It was because he was super dynamic, really good with people and really good with mon money and numbers. And again, we don't have to go super deep here. This is just to share. Don't feel like you need to share. But think about somebody you, can everybody think of somebody who they can identify as highly magnetic? Okay, cool. And we just wanna start to unpack a little bit uh, what goes into the formula or what goes into this special mix of traits that make somebody highly magnetic. All right, now let's talk about you. Deep, in, deep into your magnetism. So what is the best compliment you've ever received? Often when we receive compliments, especially the ones that surprise us, there's something somebody sees that is in you naturally that either in a moment of not paying attention or in a moment of total authenticity, they see that about you and you're like, what, what do you mean? That's my experience. But the compliments that really stick, the ones that we remember, often do touch something inside that we know to be true. Anyone like to share? Best compliment you've ever received? What was happening when you received it? How did you respond? And then what? Not going to say this is the best ever, but it was a recent compliment that kind of took me back because it was unexpected. Nice. Uh, from recent mom friends they're like your style we just love your style and you just look so great in the morning and I'm like I like my clothes my laundry pile is a mess like it was totally it just shocked me for a moment so it was like I guess I just was perceiving an ease about me that mm. the sweater and the shirt and whatever pants and socks look good to this crowd of people so uh I said thank you. And nice. We're, okay. And we're, friends, good. and we're friends now. So excellent. <laughs> excellent. But I, I did notice that your your thoughts went to the laundry pile like immediately. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh what? What are you talking about? Like, no, like style. What are you Yeah. Yeah. And so what I what I hear in that and what often happens is that we're actually channeling something when we are relaxed, when we're just like showing up as ourselves. And when people notice that, it's a little embarrassing sometimes because it's like, oh, I could have been so much more put together or really this old thing. And you're just like, really? But yet these are the moments where your beauty comes through. All right. Here's another one. Hold on. Oh, <laughs> Jamie. Sean has to share his best compliment. You okay? Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> I kind of like just whispered it over what. One that came to my mind uh, was a long time ago. I was playing uh, piano with a friend of mine in like a church and we played like an old hymn and uh, it went well. And when it was over, this uh, old lady with like the flower hats, the big purple <laughs> dress, she came up to me and goes, boy, you crossed over. <laughs> I love that. I don't know what I crossed Whoa. over into, but I felt it. It was a great compliment. 
play the music that well. And what did you do? How did you respond? I'm not sure what I said. It was a long time ago. But I thank you. <laughs> nice. Yeah. You tapped into something that touched her. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. All right. There's something in the chat. I would say my mom's dad too. Outgoing, kind, would help anyone with anything. Faithful, determined, made the best of everything. Did not get down. Able to do tire from two jobs. Keep up a farm. Raise five kids. Help the environment and stream quality. You know how that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. And I think when you have a high degree of magnetism, you have a way to accomplish more because you are working with energy. You're not just working with your logic and action. Okay. Last quote. The essential element in personal magnetism is consuming, is a consuming sincerity and overwhelming faith in the importance of the work one has to do. And sometimes when we're focused on that work, we're not aware of how we're presenting to others. And so sometimes I just bring up the compliment thing as a moment of surrender, because sometimes when we're in that natural state, that is our most highly magnetic state. And because we're not aware of it, we're not necessarily aware that we're channeling anything, but it is noticeable to the point where strangers will talk to you. All right. So let's talk about energy. So that highly magnetic person, you know, I invite you to close your eyes and just take a breath and just imagine that person. Think about that person who's highly magnetic and connect with your body. And as you connect with your body, maybe take a couple breaths. Notice or remember or imagine an experience you had with them. So just go back to that moment in time where you were with them or you witnessed them and something was happening. And I wonder if you could reconnect with where in your body you felt or noticed something happening. So was there something happening in your body when you were with or witnessing or noticing that person who is highly magnetic? Where in your body might you have felt or noticed or responded to what was happening with them? So when I think of my grandfather, my throat starts to really get activated. I just think about how expressive he was verbally. And obviously my heart just gets really big. I just feel that expanding a lot. So I wonder if anyone has anything they want to share. And just savor, come back when you're ready. I also felt um, a lot in my heart area. Nice. Yeah. I get sort cool. of like a big. Um, I could sort of like a big column um, of sort of, I don't know how you would describe it, not really like light, but sort of like radiant, um, radiance, kind of like pulsy, beamy experience, like through mm. the central. Nice. So that column starts like in your heart or starts lower? Um, Actually, I would say like throat to sacral, like pretty, pretty oh, nice. So. Okay. Amazing. Amazing a column of activation. I, I really felt that like awakening and warmth and movement of energy as you were sharing that. So cool. Thank you. When we talk about energy, we want to talk about our body because our subtle energies we are feeling all the time. And because we're not aware that they're happening, just like we didn't, we weren't aware of electricity happening, but then we started to capture it and use it. Subtle energy is something that it is a tool and it is a highlighter and it is the way that we can start to notice and use that subtle energy to, to change things around us. And first thing is noticing. So I love that the column and like really identifying with something that concrete. I think that's fantastic. So let's talk about you. So going back to that compliment that you received that maybe took you a little bit by surprise. Let's go back to that moment in time. Close your eyes if you want. Uh, take a breath and reconnect with that moment. So remember into that experience and from your body perspective, just become aware, reliving that moment, re-experiencing that moment. Do you notice anything 
activating in your body? Do you have any sensations or any feelings or any thoughts that come up when you tune into your body? Because sometimes we'll have physical sensations and sometimes we'll have a thought or we'll have a feeling or we'll have a memory that comes up. Does anything come up for you from there? And then if you're still playing it, after the compliment happened and you responded to it, what then did you notice in your body after that response? Not necessary, but sometimes helpful. So my, my own example of this is a, a friend of mine who I've known since 2010. Um, we met in New York and now both of us live in Miami. <laughs> this person told me one time, like, Marta, when we make plans, I always know that you're going to follow through. You're one of the most reliable people I know. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, when we say in six weeks, we're going to get together in two months or three months, we're going to get together and we like put a date and time down. I never have to worry about if you're going to cancel. I never have to like check in with you. We just go with the plan and you're always there. And I was like, huh, is that a thing? Um, but that, when I retuned into that, I felt that in my, I felt that in my forehead. Um, I felt that in my heart and I also felt that in my crown. I was just like, wow, um, that feels good to hear that that's something that I was not perceiving, but seems pretty neat. Um, Jamie says, when I was receiving the compliment, I felt my heart expanding. But then when I responded, I felt like I was kind of closing myself off to the compliment instead of receiving it. Yeah. So did your heart change then? Like you felt it activate and then did it close again or yeah. So interesting. Why do we do that? That's like a learned response. I'm the same way. I have been the same way in the past. Um, it's something that I'm more aware of now, like just accept the compliment because somebody was generous. You want to accept the gifts of the universe because then more come, right? But that's a rewiring of the brain for many of us who are told, like, don't get a big head or don't assume people like you or, or whatever. Good. This is fantastic. Thank you. All right. So let's chat. We just had two experiences where we actually reconnected with energy and we reconnected with the energy of a person and ourselves and our bodies at a moment in time. So did anything come up for anybody that surprised them or anything that you noticed that you want to share? And it's fine if you don't. Um, yeah. So thank you, Jamie, for describing it. Because I was like, I don't even know how to put words to what I'm feeling, but you described it perfectly. Um, the other interesting thing is when I was thinking about it, it's like I have these memories of oftentimes sharing with Lisa, like, I can't believe so-and-so said such and such to me. And I remember the feeling, but like, I can't for the life of me right now, even remember what they said. Yeah, It's like, you know, and almost all of it was something related to my professional work and life there. And, um, I do feel like, in, especially in the last year that there's been an evolution of receiving the compliment and just trying to stay in that space of not letting the heart close back up, but like really keeping that channel open and, um, trying to actively receive instead of like my, my hard wire is to brush it off. And in mm. some way it was, it's like an ancestral pattern. Yeah. It was definitely learned and observed and modeled. And, um, at first it just seemed like what I was supposed to do. And then when I started to become aware of what I was doing, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm literally programming myself to not accept and receive this kind of like acknowledgement. Um, yeah. and th those are the things that are coming up for me. It's just like those reminders of that journey around um, compliment and acknowledgement. Yeah, that's so deep. That's so profound. And I, I think I totally relate to what you're saying. And I saw a lot of people nodding as you were sharing. So I feel like that is a really big noticing. And again, I feel like when we're aware, we start to retune differently. Like Maybe that's somewhere in here and we're like, oh, wait, I think I want to be over here. And then you start recalibrating your response. That's called neuroplasticity. It just means that you carve out a, a new way of 
approaching that situation. And it's very uncomfortable at first. And then over time, as we practice, it becomes easier. This is why we don't think about how to turn the shower on and what order we do things. It's in our body because the neural pathways are so deep. We don't really have to think about it and expend our emotional energy on it. But for something like that, really noticing and making a change that impacts our magnetism because we are choosing to be in a different place in the magnet. And that is huge. And that is everything. So thank you for that. Janelle said she could feel it in her gut and felt the increased strength. That's amazing. Yeah. So again, thoughts and feelings are subtle energy. We work with that all the time, but it's when we really notice based on the things that are happening in our bodies, just as a curiosity, not like judging from an intellectual point of view or a critical point of view, but when we actually reconnect with what was what were the sensations that were happening, we can sometimes catch these things that are not the way that we want to practice them. Fabulous. All right, so energy. Magnetism is experienced as subtle energy. This is This is why when somebody walks in the room who's highly magnetic, you feel something. So often people can sense subtle energy through their bodies. You were just sensing subtle energy through your bodies. So we'll do a thought experiment. This will be this will be quick. So all right, put your hands like this. I invite you to put your hands like this. All right, now pick a hand, and in that hand, I want you to think about an apple. Like project, like what does an apple look like? How heavy is it? What does the skin look like? How firm is it? Um, what, what is the shading of the skin? Does it have a stem? Is it dimpled? Is it soft? Is it hard? Just keep focusing your attention on the apple. Okay. And now weigh your hands. Are they, are they still the same weight? What happened? Jamie, did you want to say something? No, I just, I felt. You energy, felt something. Energy of the apple. You felt the energy of the apple. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. So you can just disintegrate and erase that. So you created a thought. The thought is subtle energy. The subtle energy was big enough that you felt a difference. And when we are talking about our thoughts and feelings and we're talking about moving energy, that is very subtle, but yet it can take up space. And so imagine if you were angry or frightened or grieving, like that stuff starts to actually take up space in your emotional body because it is real energy and energy takes up space. All right, so speaking of subtle energies, some of us have heard of chakras, some of us have not heard of chakras, but the chakra system is something that people talk about and there are a whole lot of feelings and thoughts about what the chakra system is but essentially the chakra system is your energy subtle energy system and the idea is that you have ways of channeling that kind of energy you were feeling in your palm your emotions and your thoughts flow through this subtle energy system and there are just centers throughout the body where these tend to collect. And each chakra has a role, it has a job. So um, root, sacral chakra, solar plexus, this is the beautiful rainbow here, the heart, the throat, the third eye, and the crown. So each one of those has a function. It also governs the organs that are in that area. And I also like to think about this as like Maslow's hierarchy. We start here with the very basic, are we safe? Are we clothed? Are we fed? Do we have shelter? And then we go up to self-actualization, which is enlightenment or whatever you want to call. So chakras have jobs. When people, and this goes to your question from the beginning, Lisa, when people develop certain gifts or strong character traits, and that could be based on their lifetime, their upbringing, just things that are natural to them, maybe even past life capacities that are coming back. Um, it indicates that they have developed or influenced those energy centers to a high degree. So chakra, energy center, same thing. So the idea is the more we develop, the more we evolve as people, the more powerful and attractive we become. So what subtle energy becomes less subtle 
And actually, when we are moving through the world, we can exemplify those characteristics and traits that are corresponding to certain chakras. So if you're a really great public speaker, you probably have a really strong throat chakra. Uh, if you're a really influential person, you also probably have a throat chakra activation. So energy, these subtle energies go through our system. And when we're powerful and attractive, energy just goes. We don't have to think about it. We don't have to say it. We don't have to move anything. It's just the energy, the more subtle and strong it is, the faster it just translates. So this is what, like instant manifestation when you get to be very powerful, like some of the, the holy masters the, of all traditions, they're able to manifest like this. Part of that is they had developed their subtle energies to a high degree. So subtle energy of magnetism increases when we lean into and develop our gifts and talents and let them shine when we are accepting those compliments and we are big and really going with what is naturally our gifts. So when I'm just going to go back to my grandpa because we used the example earlier. He had a lot of charm. For me, that is that is sacral energy, heart energy, throat energy, charisma, same. Caringness, a lot of heart, creativity, your sacral, your sex chakra, and your throat. So lower creativity, higher creativity, confidence. Solar plexus is involved in confidence. If we're not having a strong solar plexus, we're not confident. There's also an element of throat and for me crown when you're really confident no matter what's going to happen in life like that's a spiritual thing that to me shows and is an indication that you're connected to something higher if you really believe everything is going to be okay and you don't have logical evidence for that all right i'm going to invite you to take an inventory and this is where we're going into the like let's let's do something with this information so I picked three attractive qualities of myself based on information that I gathered from people close to me about something, just so you had a, an example. So let's take an inventory. What are your attractive qualities? What are the things that people tell you that you are really good at? Or what are the things that you have noticed over the years bring people directly to you? So I asked my husband and he said, you have a respect for others. You're able to meet people where you are. You're intelligent, you're intuitive, you're creative. And again, my friend said, I'm committed and I follow through. So for me, these, this one, I'll just do one since we have to keep moving. Respect for others, meeting people where they are. For me, that's like a heart thing. And that's also a crown thing. I feel like if you really can be present you have an ability to connect with people and to listen with interest and love and, and depth, you're able to really be in your heart chakra. And this column here for me is just like, if I wanted to make myself more magnetic, how would I amplify that quality they, that I have? What are the things that I could do to amplify? I would say, make an intention to be deeply present, make uh, practice gratitude, practice respect, practice, blessing. When I meet a person, oftentimes people are, are telling me what has gone wrong. So to be able to keep my heart open and share love with them, that's like an active thing that I do. And I think that that makes me visible to people who are looking for a, a heart, right? When they're looking for somebody who wants to be listening with love and compassion. So think of three, again, this can be post work or skip ahead, but I think it's worth looking at like, what are the, what are the functions that are involved in these activations? And then on the flip side, so, okay, before I get to the flip side, <laughs> the subtle energy of magnetism decreases when we fixate on others or dwell outside of our gifts and talents. So if our amplification and bo boosting our magnetism comes from leaning into our gifts, when we lean into trying to control or what is happening with other people, lose our magnetism because we're focused on things we can't actually control. And we're focused on the pole that we don't want to be on. If we want to be on this pole. We got to start to amplify, like Joyce was saying, what's over here. And that is subtle work. So on the flip side, again, we're, we all have work to do, including me. 
some of these things that are good aspects that are attractive, there is, it's still the same pole. So there's also a, a flip side. So I'd like you to think about, yeah, and take screenshots, do this work later. It's worth really investing in. So if you're on the attractive side, that's great, but there's also some repellent stuff that it's good to clean up once you're aware of it. So again, no judgment, no shame. This is all just healthy self-inquiry, but thinking about what's repellent for me, sometimes I take on too much. Sometimes I allow people to take advantage. <laughs> I have boundary issues sometimes, and that's something that I'm working on. But what is the chakra that has the job to help you counter that? For me, it is the solar plexus, again, the will to follow through on that. And uh, awareness, which is third eye. Sometimes if I am not even noticing the boundary issue is happening, I don't have the ability to correct it. So the action step to correct it would be being intentional about having that. It's great to be heartful, but you need a container for that. To be con uh, intentional about the container, to communicate what that is, because people don't always tune into what's happening with you and, and where your boundaries are, and then accountability. So those are, that's just one example for me. We want to look at like, what are the chakras we could be developing more? So when I say to counter, we're just looking at how are we going to correct the, what is repelling the magnetism? Like, where are we leaking on the repelling side that we want to activate the opposite chakra? So does that make sense to everybody? Okay. All right. So that was our workshop. Does anyone have any questions? questions. What was valuable? What did you notice? What are your questions? Any, anyone like to share? <clears throat> so Joyce and I were just kind of having a little sidebar about the chakra situation. And um, it's interesting because we both reflected um, a version of having like both a strength and a weakness in the same chakra. And <laughs> so what what is your like take on the potential, whether it's like a block, whether it's a overcompensation, whatever that would result in like one side of the chakra being sort of really clicked in, whereas the other lies a lot more dormant or feels like it's less accessible and activated. That's a fantastic question. And I, I think it's really deep and it's worth really it's worth really absorbing because it's at the heart of what is going to free us all. Uh, um, and what I mean by that is I've noticed that the places where I have <clears throat> areas to grow and develop, like the underdeveloped aspects for me cause the most suffering because I'm just not paying attention to them as much. So I believe that to increase the inner magnetism is almost like a natural outcome of focusing on what it is that you are fulfilling or succeeding or doing really well and then being honest with yourself about the the other side so when we can and again there's no shame in like self-inquiry and i have a practice every day and this is concrete in case that's what you're looking for but I have a practice every day where I look at, I work on an aspect of myself, where I work on an aspect that is in my chakras and your chakras hold pain and they also hold joy and they hold your gifts and talents. All of that is in there and there are layers to these things. So I find that just like an onion and just like the bazillion layers of polarity on both sides, when you start doing healthy self-inquiry, not with judgment, not with shame, not with self-criticism, but just noticing. And I do this every day in the morning. I go through the previous day and like right now I'm working on loving kindness and non-injury. I notice where I was not kind and loving to myself first. And I just noticed that and I'm like, okay, I work to erase the mistake. I kind of like allow myself a moment of compassion that that was hurtful to myself. So I notice it. I will myself to do better, but I also acknowledge what went well. Like, where was I kind to myself? So maybe I said that nasty word to myself in my head, but I gave myself an extra five minutes to just not be productive and to be breathing and alive. You know, it's that kind of way because when you're working on yourself, which is really the path to enlightenment, 
you could have karma teach, a, teach you um, what your lessons are, or you can be looking at yourself and on a path to be inquiring and learning and curious about your own development as a being. And I think that in school, we follow the program, but as an adult, we don't necessarily have a structured way to do that. So it is valuable to be in groups like this that are having these kinds of conversations and to be in groups with people who are healing. Community is so important for this because none of us ever has a, a path to healing <laughs> that is linear and just like that chart that every board wants to see on their on their PL. It's just not like that. It's very messy. But just like anything, I believe self-compassion is the muscle that connects everything <laughs> on your journey. And the more you can increase your practice of checking in with yourself, being honest and noticing your mistakes and working to correct them. Again, not like how oh, could you not going into the like what happened and why and how, but just notice it let it go, release it, <laughs> forgive yourself and make a plan to for being more aware or being more self-compassionate or whatever it is. But ultimately, if you're not practicing compassion or you're not in a space where you can be messy with other people and be honest, it's harder to do that work. So that's my very long answer to your question. I Did that get to something? Okay, great. And I cannot say enough about the value of character development. It is messy, gross work a lot of times, but I found that it's really worth it because the more I am able to expel of generational things, my programming, you know, lived experiences that taught me certain things that now I'm unlearning, like it's all good because we are here to evolve. The universe is expanding. We're part of the universe and we will continue to expand. It's when we don't find ways to get support in that space of expansion, that it's the hardest. But anyone here on this call, I know would be happy to be part of a community. And many of you are part of a community of people who are committed to self-inquiry and self-growth. And I think that's absolutely the key. If we're all truly connected on a quantum level, anybody's healing helps anybody else. And I really believe that. Okay. So Here's, I, I do the business healer. So this is what I'm just sharing the work. So I take holistic view of people. Joyce was talking a little bit about the, the work that we've done together where I don't just look at strategy and I don't just look at subtle energies. We look at connecting mind, body, and spirit because we're dynamic people and we have messy days and we have great days and we have non-messy days and it's all great actually. And what's happening inside affects what's happening outside. So if you're not being mag magnetic inside, it's likely that won't be happening on the outside. Or if you're suffering inside, that that usually shows up outside. And I use pranic healing. It's all protocol based. My spiritual teacher is an engineer and we can literally move energy out of the body and it's awesome. So that's what I do. I have a program starting on Saturday. Several of you are coming and some others who are not on the call, but if you have any questions, we're going to be focusing solely on radiance and magnetism. And this is going to be a group program. The groups that I have always have way better, cooler insights than just working with me because they get to learn from one another. And the whole focus of this program is really based on what people bring to the table. I will be structuring it, but not it's not like a curriculum-based things like previous programs that I've done. And it's going to be really fun, really rewarding, and really very much focused on glow. And the fun thing is I'm also going to do like an energy facelift for anybody who wants one or body sculpting because energy, subtle energy is available for many kinds of uses. And that's just like a fun thing. So anyone has any questions about that, let me know. You're welcome to check it out. Uh, no obligation. If it's not for you, that's cool too. So if you'd like to share your feedback and get a bonus healing meditation. This one is about aligning your profit centers with your energy centers. If you already have that one, let me know and I can send you another one. But this is just a little bit so that I can understand what your experience was like today. Awesome. Glad it was entertaining. And actionable. 
Okay, very good. Main takeaway. Energy work is healing work, learning about subtle energies, energy within can impact the energy in my day interaction with others, protecting complements to feelings in the body, practical application, understanding concepts, and how energy can be subtle yet create big channels for attraction and repulsion. Thinking about intention as a gateway to tapping my energy and receiving more of what I desire. Love that. Another thing about that is making plans, studying, having unstructured time, having being in community, committing to things, gratitude, forgiveness, and compassion are always huge. So you're also feel free to grab your free meditation here. I'll also put it in the chat so that you have it. And thank you all. This has been awesome. I hope you have enjoyed it.